Hi, I'm Dallas Campbell. I'm a factual television presenter, uh, mainly doing science documentaries. And I'm actually in the middle of doing a film right here at St Paul's Cathedral. And I'm going to try and answer some of your science questions. I say try. Um, where's Christopher Wren when you need him? OK, so this is a question from Claire, who's uh, from Hertfordshire, and she's 14. She's very keen to get into the science communication industry. How do you get into the industry and what qualifications would you need? And I got into it because I was, I'm, I'm mad keen about science and uh, um, my sort of enthusiasm, I think, was what really spurred me on to, to pursue a career in this. And I think that is the key. You, you, you can only do a job like this if you're, if you're genuinely passionate about your subject. So find, find your subject, find what it is that you're passionate about and do that. Okay, so Ellie, who's age 14 from Essex, wants to know, uh, should politicians listen to scientists more than they do currently, uh, especially regarding saving the planet for the continuation of mankind? Gosh, I think that is a really, really difficult question. Well, obviously, uh, politicians are, to an extent, um, uh, concerned with our welfare, which is important, and scientists gather their information around the world through evidence. So these are two very important things. So yes, politicians do need to listen to scientists, but politicians also need to understand how science works. Uh, and science is a, is a self-correcting mechanism. And I think politicians need to understand really in, in fine detail what the scientific method is. And I think that will help politicians perhaps more than anything else. Okay, we're getting into some quite deep questions here. Uh, why do we have to believe the laws of physics that people such as Einstein have made? Ultimately, we have evidence. Um, uh, certainly through Einstein's um, theory of relativity, we have evidence through people like Eddington, um, the position of a, of a star that he noticed because of an eclipse had moved, so we understand that light bends around um, massive objects. Um, also, we know that time and space are, are intrinsically linked, which sounds like a very esoteric idea, but this can be measured again uh, with atomic clocks. And as our technology gets better and better and better, then these strange-sounding ideas um, will actually uh, reveal themselves to us through evidence. So ultimately, that's the reason. This is a great question. And of course, there is no answer to this question. Uh, well, I'll give you the answer right now. I have no idea. Uh, Elizabeth, age 18, from Leicestershire. As technology has changed our lives so much in the past 10 years, what do you think the next big advancement will be? I wonder about the next 10 years. And I think about things like digital manufacturing. Um, specifically, and I think you, you may have heard of things like 3D printing, the fact that you can now send off a digital file and have an actual physical object uh, made up, uh, I, I think is really exciting, and I, and I look forward um, to where that's going to be going in the next 10 years. Oh, this is a very good question. Anonymous from Surrey, why does your hair turn grey? Well, the thing that gives your hair colour is a pigment called melanin. It's also what gives your skin colour. Uh, and as you get older, the cells that produce melanin die off and, uh, and therefore your hair turns grey. It's generally a genetic thing, so if you look at your parents, what, what age they turn grey, um, then that's probably a fairly good indicator. So there's a big genetic element to it. Um, I'm looking at my own hair. Luckily I don't have that problem because uh, I'm only 25. Here's a good question from Ian. If you had 50 billion quid, who doesn't, um, where would it best be spent on searching space or searching the seas? God, how do you answer a question like that? Well, I suppose from my own personal point of view, I've always been very interested in space, in, 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 in the search for life beyond the Earth. So from a purely uh, personal uh, point of view, I, if I had 50 billion quid, it would probably go on telescopes and research into, 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 looking, into looking out there. But maybe I'd keep a little bit back for, for searching the seas as well, just to keep them happy. It's all good. Yeah, this is a question from Jamie, who's 12. If the universe is expanding, what's it expanding into? It's a really, really good question. And the problem is, it's very difficult for our brains to get around ideas of that, because, of course, in our daily lives, we've evolved not to worry about universes expanding. The question of what's it expanding into, well, it's not expanding into anything, because the very structure, the very fabric of space-time is, is expanding. So it's not expanding into anything, which probably doesn't help you with your question, with what you're trying to imagine. But um, uh, it's one of my favourite questions, and I like to bamboozle myself on a daily basis by thinking about such things. All of these questions are absolutely fantastic, and it's questions like this that actually inspired me to do the job that I do. And if you've been inspired, why not enter the National Science and Engineering Competition?